Hey everyone! For our next adventure into the world of literary criticism, we'll be talking about feminism. This is part of my Fantasy Lit 101 series, so please keep in mind that this is about literature and not a political movement. I feel that it is important to better understand what I mean when I say feminism before we take a closer look at the theory itself. I think that feminism has become a very politically charged and misused word. I cannot stress enough that feminism is in no way synonymous with misandry or hatred of men. It is about women standing alongside men, not above them. Feminism is about equality, freedom, and independence. Another politically charged term that I will be using here is patriarchy. Personally, I consider patriarchy to refer to men who exploit their power. It doesn't mean all men. The patriarchy harms women by viewing them through stereotypes, but it also harms men by creating an unattainable image of the ideal man that is not possible to attain. So let's begin by talking about the nature of feminist theory. Unlike the two other main critical lenses, psychoanalysis and Marxism, feminism was not developed by a single individual. It was put forward over a period of time as different women and men put forth ideas about how women's writing should be studied. Feminist criticism presupposes that there is something inherently different about the way women write. This may seem odd, but we do know that there is certainly something different about the way women speak, so it only makes sense that they would write differently. The first major work of feminist criticism was written by Virginia Woolf. It was her novel, A Room of One's Own, and in this novel, she created the speculative character Judith Shakespeare. The point of this character was to illustrate how a sister to Shakespeare with equal amounts of talent would have had less exposure to the education and social connections that would have allowed her to succeed. Simone de Beauvoir wrote another influential work, The Second Sex. This examined women as other, or secondary to men, in various different aspects of life. It examined how this repression has manifested itself in certain points in history. The term gynocriticism was coined by Elaine Showalter in her book Towards a Feminist Poetics. Showalter put forth the term gynocriticism referring to the idea that women should have their own literary styles and tradition. Rather than struggling to copy male writing, they should create their own unique feminine form. In the same year, Sandra Gilbert and Susan Gubar wrote their famous work The Mad Woman in the Attic. In this text, they put forth two major theories by examining the works of Victorian-era female writers. The first theory was that women's writing is palimpsestic. They are using the term palimpsest here to refer specifically to a painting that has been painted on top of another painting. So Gilbert and Gubar theorize that women write palimpsestically, in the sense that they often mean one thing on the surface, but looking below that layer creates a different image entirely. And this is because women have often struggled to openly discuss issues that they are dealing with. They have to discuss them in a secret or hidden way. In a different section of the same novel, titled Infection in the Sentence, Gilbert and Gubar assert that women are infected by the sentences of patriarchy. Notice the double entendre here. Sentences can mean written words put together to form a complete idea, but also a sentence as in punishment or jail time. Women are trapped by the writings of patriarchy that came before them. Because of this, they must struggle to create their own literary tradition. And this is so difficult because if every piece of art you've ever viewed has been created by a male, if you're one of the first women writers, you don't have anything to go off of. You don't really have any idea of what the female writing is like. So I think they made a really important point here by kind of talking about how do women forge their own path. The idea of the male gaze came from a slightly different discipline. Laura Mulvey, who coined this term in 1975, was a film critic. In her essay, Visual Pleasure and the Narrative Cinema, she identified the male gaze as a tendency of visual art to see from the male point of view. So how do these different ideas come together, and what do we look for in a feminist reading? First, remember that we must know the gender of the author.
Feminist criticism is all about understanding the differences between how women and men write. Then we should consider how male and female characters interact. How are the women portrayed? How are the men portrayed? How is any sexist behavior dealt with? What sort of voice do women characters have? Are they able to speak their mind, or are they repressed by others? Then think of the male gaze and consider if a woman's body is broken down into parts. This is very often done in advertising, so a lot of times you'll have maybe a bottle of beer next to a nice looking pair of legs and they really don't have anything to do with each other, it's just the sex appeal, not even the sex appeal of a woman as a human, the sex appeal of a woman's legs independently. Since women throughout time have been confined to domestic roles, the home can often be understood as a symbol of confinement and repression. Is the home mentioned? How is it discussed? The last question is a more general one that we should be asking ourselves. Is the male experience somehow considered more generic? That is to say, is the male experience more important and relatable while the female experience is seen as minority and unimportant? Why is The Catcher in the Rye required reading for most schools but Little Women is not? Thanks for watching. Please like my Facebook page and follow my blog if you haven't done so already. You can also email me if you have any questions. Next week, I'll be using feminism to interpret the forbidden words of Margaret A. This is considered one of the best sci-fi short stories written by a woman and lends itself easily to the feminist interpretation. If you want to read it, it's very quick and is fully available online. Alright, I hope you enjoyed. See you next week.